Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Marketo. Hi everyone, welcome back to Marketo Foo. My name is Joe Wrights, and on this episode today, what I want to talk about is programs and channel tags. So uh, it's actually a very easy subject to talk about channels and tags, and uh, it's kind of a foundational thing to any implementation that's going to help you build rock solid reporting from day one. Um, so it's kind of a rectangular, rectangle and square situation where all channels are tags, but not all tags are channels. So uh, I think it's easiest to understand just by looking at it. So let me uh, share my screen here. And cool. So back into Marketo, uh, when you're when you first log in, go up to admin here in the corner, and then you have two spots. You can either go over here to tags if you prefer the center of the screen or uh, over here, same thing, just different uh, different ways to get at it. Uh, when you're in the tags area, you'll notice uh, however many, you'll, you'll see your channel drop down as well as any additional program tags that you may have set up. And it, within this, um, you can blow these out. So let's talk about channel tags first. So what a channel tag is, is basically any way that a lead can get into your, your database or your, your instance of Marketo. Uh, would be one of these channels. And you can have many of these, you can have a few. Uh, most of these are just kind of the ones that come in Marketo by default. Um, and then you can also look at any any programs that are currently using that tag. Uh, again, we're in the Fathom Sandbox, so nothing, nothing groundbreaking here. Um, but uh, basically what channels are for, in addition to just describing how leads get into your database, is they help you track progression through a program and ultimately to some kind of success stage. So what does that look like? Uh, if we look at something like, uh, let's look at in-person event, for example. Uh, when you double click on any one of these channel tags, you see that there's a list of progression statuses and also a drop down here I'll come back to. But basically, uh, when you invite someone, you, you, you define kind of when you create one, what program types it applies to. Uh, see the other day's video if, uh, if you need a primer on program types. And then when you choose that program type, you'll be able to set this channel tag. And if, if the program uses this channel, then basically as leads are in the program, uh, with flow steps, you can progress them to various stages throughout. So for an in-person event, it might look like invited is the first stage. That means they're just kind of like a member of the program. Uh, registered would mean they've taken some kind of action and actually obviously registered and uh, attended would be another stage and if say at the event they they indicated some something to you that makes makes you think they're a, a very highly qualified lead uh, you can add an additional layer there to to denote that in in the system but uh, the thing here that you can't see because of this little marketo warning is there's also one for no show and um, Leads can progress forward or backwards through this. Uh, you just you, with manual flow, either flow steps or doing it manually from a uh, a, um, a a list or, or uh, um, the results tab of a, a program smart campaign, but um, or the members tab of a program was what I was looking for. But uh, what you'll also notice is over here, there's this column for success. So you can have one or more. Uh, success statuses within a within a program. I would advise ha having a high threshold, high bar for what success is, um, but because then basically when you go down, as we'll get to in future videos, when we start talking about uh, first touch, multi touch, six, uh, you know, program influence uh, throughout Marketo, having achieving success is how you can easily say yes, this program beyond a shadow of a doubt had an impact on converting that lead into revenue. So um, the higher the bar, the more credible that claiming the marketing influence is going to be, essentially. So that's that's a very quick primer on, on channel tags and how progression statuses work. Uh, this other drop down up here that says analytics behavior, um, by default, it will say normal, which means you have to enter a period cost in the program. I'll cover that in a future video. But uh, you can also choose inclusive, meaning that if even if there's no program cost added, it's going to show up in uh, Marketo reporting when you, if you have RCA. And if you want to hide it from reporting, say it's like an operational channel, you could select operational. Uh, generally, what I like to do is mark a lot of things as inclusive uh, if, if it makes sense. Like I, I can't imagine a scenario where I wouldn't want to report on an event, but uh, 
some a good practice you should get in the habit of doing is adding period cost to everything you can in Marketo because then when you calculate ROI through some, through a tool like RCA, uh, what you're going to be able to do is show exactly how much revenue that event influenced and have a direct correlation to ROI. Cool. I know that's a little overwhelming, uh, especially if you're new to Marketo. But uh, I promise channel tags are not that daunting to set up. And as, as you get more and more familiar, the, the why of things and how it works with reporting will be more, more evident. And if you ever wanted to delete uh, one of these statuses, you simply just click the X here and then no show is gone. I can add it back if I, if I wish. The one thing to know is, um, be, so these steps, they just have to be sequential. They could be in fives or tens, it doesn't matter. But um, they, they, if they're the same thing, then leads can cycle back through. So if there's, these are both 30, they, they could kind of move between them. But uh, so don't do that. <laughs> so uh, when you're done setting up your channel tags, just click save. And I think I'm, I think I'm stalled out. But, um, and that's basically all you need to know about channel tags. You can set these up for as many channels as you have. Uh, I would advise using uh, the right number rather than just letting the sprawl. So if you have a lot of zeros here, um, you probably don't need those channel tags. It's not part of your strategy. But uh, as far as program tags, these are a little bit more granular. And all these are is um, they can be required or not. So if we wanted to make a new one, a uh, new tag type, and we would say, um, uh, program tag test, and we could add as many values as we want. So like uh, we could say, uh, for example, let's say we're a jeweler. We could say rings, we could say um, bracelets, and earrings, something along those lines. And then we could say what programs these apply to. We could say the default, engagement, email, event, an event with webinar. So basically all of them, and then we click create. So then what we do with these tags, so now you'll see that the, we have this, this list here. Uh, when you go into Marketo and you create a new program back in marketing activities, uh, let's do that here. So if I wanted to create a new program and I choose uh, an event, and now I get to choose the channel, we'll say, uh, an in-person event just to use the example we had and we'll hit create so you notice there was no oops no. Got a better idea cool so you'll notice that that there is the only required tag was the channel tag I could have set it up back over here where um, this tag is required and then I would have had to have entered it selected one of the values that within this, this program tag uh, back when I created the program. But by default, it's not. But if I ever wanted to add that tag to the program, I would go into setup and then uh, bring in this tag and then select a value. So you can see the reason you'd use program tags is basically to further categorize your, your programs for reporting purposes. So uh, when we get into something like RCA, or RCE, whatever we're calling it now, uh, advanced reporting, and you wanted to run a report related only to programs that had to do with bracelets or you know whatever the product is or service or solution, whatever whatever the the program tag is, it lets you get a little more granular of the data. So you could look at, you can start to think about how you'd layer these in and do. You could do them by industry, you could do them by geographic location, and then slice and dice your reporting in ways that are a little more customized to how you uh, how you may need it. So that was uh, a very quick high flyover for channels and tags. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to hit them in the comments or um, you know, definitely on the Marketo community or docs.marketo is another excellent resource for more info. Um, but yeah, see you guys tomorrow.